Good afternoon, students. So I was discussing the plant breeding for disease resistance. So I told about uh, the disease, which are the agents uh, they are going to cause the diseases to the crop plants. See here, we have to develop resistance in plant. Resistance is seen in some plants. So resistance is capacity of plants. So particularly the crop plants to resist or prevent infection by a pathogen. So resistance is the capacity of plants to resist or prevent the infection by a pathogen. That is resistance capacity. So this resistance capacity to the plant is imparted mainly by genes. The genetic characters which are present in the plant can help in importing the resistance character to these crop plants. So we want to develop the resistance to the crop plants in this method so that they are not easily attacked by the pathogens and it should not lead to greater loss of crop plants. Different diseases are caused. To the plants. So first uh, we will list out fungal disease. Fungal diseases are mainly say rust, the rust of weed, rust disease. Rust is caused by mainly oxymia. Graminess tritica. This is the fungus which is going to cause rust disease. Then next we have smut. Smut disease. If you take the smut disease, it is caused by mainly ustilago. Ustilago will cause smut disease. Then uh, another example, red rot of sugar cane, red rot of sugar cane, it is caused by Coletotrichum falcatum, red rot of sugar cane disease is caused by Coletotrichum falcatum. Another example we can have late blight or potato. It is caused by Phytophthora infestans. Phytophthora infestans. So these are some of the fungal diseases, other diseases are also caused. A few examples you have to remember. These are the fungal diseases, the causal fungus, these. Bacterial diseases. Example, black rot of crucifer. So mustard family crucifers caused by mainly <coughs> Xanthomonas campestris. Leaf blight of rice. Leaf 
light of rice caused mainly by xanthomonas oryze citrus canka xanthomonas citra xanthomonas citra so these are some of the example of bacterial diseases caused by the bacteria viral diseases the diseases caused by virus so simple examples we have tobacco mosaic disease caused by tobacco mosaic virus turnip mosaic disease caused by turnip mosaic virus turnip mosaic virus we have cauliflower mosaic disease cauliflower mosaic disease caused by cauliflower mosaic virus so you have mosaic diseases caused by virus okay leaf curling then vein clearing vein clearing leaf curling okay leaf rolling these are some of what we call the diseases which are caused by the viruses so different uh, pathogen can cause different uh, types of diseases which uh, lead to destruction of the crop plant and resulting uh, in lower yield that is why we have to produce the disease resistant plants so usually what is uh, done uh, to produce the disease resistant plant uh, we take uh, a crop variety which is a uh, normal popular crop variety which can uh, yield high which can yield high but the problem is that it is susceptible to disease susceptible to the common pathogenic diseases so the normal popular cultivating their crop variety this has to be cross with a wild related variety a related wild species related wild species it has usually it has no yield but it possess disease resistance character disease resistance character the disease resistance character is due to the presence of the genes disease resistant genes which impart disease resistance character so when we cross these when we hybridize these so we are going to get that uh, disease resistant variety disease resistant variety we are going to produce which is resistant to diseases 
So during this method, what happens is this disease resistant gene will be transferred into a susceptible variety. Thereby, susceptible variety can change into disease resistant variety. This is one of the common methods which we follow in producing disease resistant variety. So to develop disease resistant variety, we are following the one that is hybridization and it is followed by it is followed by selection one in hybridization followed by selection the, this method is commonly used to develop a disease resistant plant what are the steps involved in producing disease resistant plants So the steps involved in developing disease resistant plants The first step that is screening of the plant for resistant sources screening of germplasm for resistant sources so with germplasm you know germplasm is the sum total of all the leaves of uh, all the genes present in a crop so the plant breeding material which we cultivate that germplasm or plant breeding material should have some resistant sources so it should have the resistant genes so the plant species which we select and all that whether it had disease resistant gene or not that we have to see. So particularly disease resistant genes will be present in wild varieties. So we target such wild varieties which are having disease resistant uh, characters and these wild variety related species can be crossed with the commercial common cultivating variety. The second step is Hybridization, hybridization of uh, the selected parental plant. Hybridization of the selected parental plant. So we have to cross pollinate one with uh, what you call disease resistant genes, disease resistant character, and another one with. Uh, crop plant which is susceptible or prone to the diseases or patterns. Then the third step uh, we have to selection and evaluation of hybrids. selection and evaluation of the hybrid that is the next step so after hybridization the young ones the hybrids which offspring which you get whether they have that disease resistant gene in that or not we have to select and we have to evaluate so out of the several process made only few plants will undergo successful hybridization or crossing that's why only those plants we have to choose, the hybrid plants which have undergone successful hybridization or crossing and possessing disease resistant characters controlled by disease resistant genes. Then the last step that is testing and release of hybrids. Testing and release of hybrids. So, after testing, first in the research field, then in uh, the field, open field conditions, then uh, we can release such hybrids with our disease resistance. So these are some basic steps involved in developing disease resistance in 
plant. So it involves basically hybridization followed by selection. So some of the crop varieties which have been developed by hybridization followed by selection, importing their disease resistant characters. You have to remember uh, certain crop varieties are resistant to particular diseases. So this table we have to remember. So different uh, crop variety, resistance to particular diseases. First one, a wheat variety. Thingiri, the variety name is Thingiri. It is resistant to disease. Leaf and stripe rust. Leaf rust, stripe rust we can call. Leaf rust and stripe rust. Then hill bunt, resistant to hill bunt disease. Then next we have brassica, that is mustard. The variety is Pusa Swarnim. Pusa Swarnim. It is referred as Karandrai. Pusa Swarnim. It is referred as Karandrai. It is resistant to white rust. This is called a fungus. This is also called a fungus. White rust, you know, Anbuga candida. Cystopus candidus that is going to come on white rust in crucifers. So, this is the crucifer member that is brassica mustard. Then we have cauliflower. So, here two varieties Usa Shubra, Usa. Snowball K1. Pusa Snowball K1. So these are resistant to black rot and curl blight black rot. Call the bacteria black rot all that. Then uh, the next uh, crop we have. Coffee. Coffee, the variety is Pusa Pomal. It is resistant to bacterial blight. Bacterial blight caused by Xanthomonox species, caused by Pseudomonox species of bacteria. Pusa Pomal, Coffee. Then another one we have that is chili. Chili, the variety is Pusa Sadabaha. This Pusa Sadabaha is resistant to Chili mosaic virus. Chili mosaic virus. Then uh, tobacco mosaic virus. Chili mosaic virus and tobacco mosaic virus and uh, leaf uh, curl. Resistant to leaf cut. So these are the crop varieties which are resistant to diseases. Very important for 
neat point of view. We have to remember the, the five crop varieties, variety name and the resistance to particular disease. So very, very important. So we have to remember these. Okay. So we are using the, the term PUSA here. Indian Agriculture Research Institute, IRI, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, okay, at uh, popularly known as PUSA, situated at New Delhi. That's why we use the term PUSA. Okay, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, situated uh, in New Delhi, popularly known as PUSA, which uh, work under Indian Council of Agriculture Research under Ministry of uh, Agriculture. Okay, so this uh, is carrying out various research programs uh, to develop uh, several disease resistant and other insect pest resistant plants. That's why the name is given OSA. So this is all about uh, plant breeding for disease resistance. Now, So when you develop the disease resistance plant, the conventional breeding or hybridization to produce disease resistant plants is limited, constrained, is limited or constrained by availability of disease resistant genes so we find uh, such a disease resistant genes in a few wild species and a few crop plants, commercially cultivating crop plants. So we don't have such a disease resistant genes in large number of the plant, so that uh, these can act as a source of gene of uh, disease resistance. So our conventional hybridization or plant breeding is limited by the availability of less number of disease resistant genes, especially in wild species or crop plants. That is why it is difficult to get such kind of superior genes in order to produce disease resistant plants by this hybridization procedure. So to overcome this limitation, what we have naturally due to the less availability of disease resistant genes, we have introduced okay, another method. So scientists have introduced another method that is mutation breeding. This is another method of plant breeding which is very commonly used, it has become very popular because of uh, the technique which was introduced or initiated by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan in India. So we can produce disease resistant plants through mutation breeding. What is mutation breeding? Improvement of crop plants by changing the genotype of plants through induced mutation is known as mutation breeding.
So improvement of crop plants by changing the genotype of plants through induced mutation is known as mutation breeding. So here the plant part is exposed to an agent which can cause mutation that is mutagen. This mutagen can be a physical mutagen or it is chemical mutagen. The physical mutagens uh, can be radiations, uh, electromagnetic radiations, ionizing radiations. So in one category you have electromagnetic radiations such as uh, UV rays, then X-rays you can use to induce the mutation. Otherwise we can use ionizing radiations such as alpha rays, beta rays and gamma rays we can use. Okay, so gamma radiation is very commonly used here to induce mutation. These gamma radiations uh, will be emitted from radioactive element and that plant pot is exposed for a brief period of time. Specific dosage is uh, given to that plant pot which can bring desirable change in the genes or genetic constitution of the plant resulting into development of disease resistance in plants. So the chemical mutagens, chemical mutagens can be nitrous oxide, nitrous acid, not oxide, nitrous acid, then the mustard gas, then malic hydroxide, then you have EMS, ethyl methyl sulfonate. These are some of the chemical mutagens which can be used to induce the mutation. If the crop is vegetatively propagating, we have to expose bud. You have to expose the bud to the mutagen. If it is sexually reproducing plant, usually seed or seedling is exposed to mutagen. So specific dosage of this mutagen to be exposed on to the plant pot. So once uh, the seed or seedling is exposed to the mutagen, it has to be cultivated, the plant is raised, plant is raised, okay, it should be self pollinated, it should be self pollinated, after the self pollination these plants are grown, okay, and we have to see whether the desired change is present or not, desired change that has been induced due to the mutation. So we have to screen the plants for the desired changes. So we have to choose only, we have to select only those plants which are having a desirable changes that is the developing disease resistance against the pathogen because of induced mutation. So this is the procedure which we use in case of mutation breeding to develop a disease resistance. Mutation breeding has been popularized in India by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. M. S. Swaminathan is the founder of radiation genetics.
is the father of green revolution in the uh, in india you know that so along with that he is the founder of radiation genetics so what uh, he has done uh, yesterday i discussed it what he did sonara 64 variety a mexican wheat variety it was exposed with uh, the gamma radiation and he produced a new improved wheat variety that is referred as sharbati sonara so this is how from mutation breeding the swaminathan has developed a new improved wheat variety so mutation breeding has helped to develop resistance to yellow mosaic virus and powdery mildew this is in moon bean moon bean in moon bean resistance to yellow mosaic virus and powdery mildew has been developed due to mutation breeding remember powdery mildew a fungal infection this is a viral infection so moon bean has been developed as a resistance uh, this is resistant variety through mutation breed which are the other crop uh, varieties that have been produced through the mutation breeding wheat sharbati sonara np836 rice jagannath tomato pusa lal miruti white mustard primax cotton indol 2 so these are some of the examples of the plants which have been produced through the mutation breeding are resistant to particular disease okay so this is about uh, the mutation uh, breeding see a bindi variety that is okra lady spinga a new variety has been developed this new variety of lady spinga or okra is resistant to yellow mosaic virus so what uh, the scientists have done a bindi variety okra variety that is abomospos esculentus it has been crossed so this is the commercial cultivating variety it has been crossed with a wild bindi variety they developed a new bindi variety it is parhani kranti which is resistant to yellow mosaic virus so a commercial cultivating lady spinger variety by name abomospos esculentus has been crossed with a wild bindi variety 
such as Avon Moscow's many hotland to develop a new multi variety resistant to yellow mosaic virus that is Parmani crown tea. Like this, a rice variety is also developed. It is IR36, which I mentioned yesterday. IR36 developed at the International Rice Research Institute. So, 13 rice varieties have been crossed with a wild rice variety that is Oriza Nivara. to get this IR36. This rice variety is resistant to grassy stun virus. So this is how different uh, disease resistant plants either through hybridization and selection or through mutation breedings have been developed in India. So even the sexual reproduction even sexual reproduction helps in the transfer of disease resistant gene between the target plant which we want to make uh, disease resistant between the target and the source plant source host plant okay the source host plant possess a disease resistant gene that has to be transferred to the target plant followed by selection So sexual reproduction even can help in the transfer of disease resistant gene between the target plant and the source host plant followed by selection. This also can help us in developing disease resistant plant. So this is all about uh, plant breeding for disease resistance. So the next one now, plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pests. So along with the, the pathogens like virus, bacteria, fungus, uh, insects also one of the largest group that can cause extensive damage to the crop plants. So they cause, uh, call, uh, they transmit the disease, they cause the infection, and uh, they cause large scale destruction of the crop plant and uh, resulting in uh, yield loss. So that's why our aim is to produce uh, resistance to even insect pests also. And insects also account uh, considerable uh, amount of loss in uh, crop uh, yield. So better to produce uh, the crop plants resistance to the most common insects which are prevalent in that particular agriculture land area. So here yeah, there are certain uh, characteristics available naturally in the plant. characteristics available naturally in the plant which can develop resistance to insect pests.
So these characters are mainly topological characters. Then we have biochemical or physiological characters. which are present naturally in the plants that can also help in developing resistance to the insect plant. So such a character plants here can be targeted for developing the resistance to the insect pest. So some of the examples uh, of uh, morphological character or biochemical character which can develop resistance to insect pest very important for main point of view. Hairy leaves in plants develop resistance to insect pests. Hairy leaves in plants develop resistance to insect pests. Example, hairy leaves in cotton develop resistance to jessies. The insects like jessets. Similarly, hairy leaves in a wheat develop resistance to cereal leaf beetle. Cereal leaf beetle. Wheat with solid stem. Wheat with solid stem is not easily attacked by stems or fly. It is not easily attacked by stem or fly. Then the next character, smooth leaved nectarless cotton variety, do not attract cotton ball worms. Smooth-leaved, nectarless cotton variety do not attract any cotton ball worms, which cause the extensive damage to the cotton. Then another character, see, hairy leaves and present of solid stem. These are morphological character, smooth leaf and nectarless cotton variety. It can be physiological character, the biochemical character such as high ascorbic acid, high ascorbic acid, low nitrogen, and low sugar content in maize. Develop resistance. High ascorbic acid, low nitrogen, and low sugar content in maize develop resistance to maize tempora. So these are the characteristics which develop resistance in plants uh, quite naturally. So these things we have to remember, very, very important. So what are the steps involved in uh, developing resistance to insect pest or insect resistant plant. The same kind of steps we have. So screening of uh, germplasm for resistant sources. Then we have to follow the hybridization among the selected parents. Then animation uh, of hybrid hybrid then lastly testing and release of hybrids testing and release of uh, 
hybrid or new variety. So the basic steps uh, will remain the same in developing uh, the insect resistance in plants. So basically it involves uh, hybridization followed by selection. So, by following uh, the different uh, steps in developing the insect resistant plants, some of the crop varieties have been developed. the crop variety we have brassica it is the rapeseed mustard the variety is pusa doro it is resistant to insect pests such as aphids aphids usually wingless insects which can act as a vector in transmitting diseases, all that. Then the second crop we have flat bean. In case of flat bean, we have Pusa Sem 2, Pusa Sem 3, Pusa Sem 2, Pusa Sem 3, resistant to jacids, aphids and fruit borer. Then the another example here we have okra that is bindi ladies finger the varieties are pusa savani pusa a4 these are resistant to shoot and fruit borer insect. So the windy variety, Pusa Savani, Pusa A4, resistant to shoot and fruit borer. So these are certain crop varieties uh, resistant to different insect pests. So this table also we have to remember. So table of disease resistance and table of the insect resistant plant, very important for need point of view. So this is a one more objective that is plant breeding for developing resistance to insect plant. Now moving on to the next one now, plant breeding for improved food quality. Our diet or our food is constituted mainly by cereals, cereals like jawar, rice, bagra, oat, barley, etc. Then we have pulses. 
which are rich in protein. These cereals are rich in carbohydrates. Carbohydrate mainly is fat. Okay, pulses are rich in protein. So the pulses are mainly you have uh, what you call uh, dals. Or commonly we call it a dals which are rich in protein. Okay, two dal, moong dal, fenek dal, dalki dal. Right? Different types of dals are gram, green gram, black gram, red gram. Okay, then uh, pea we have, then uh, groundnut we have, beans we have. So different types of pulses which belong to a uh, basic family. Then vegetables. Vegetables are rich in uh, what you call minerals and vitamins. Then uh, we even have fruits. Okay, so these fruits can be rich in sugars, then uh, vitamins, minerals. So our diet or food uh, is uh, comprising of these uh, what you call different kind of uh, the food commodities. See what we eat in our day-to-day -day life. You know, as per the suggestion of World Health Organization, depending on age, depending on gender, depending on the mode of work. Okay, so different required quantity of protein, vitamin, minerals, and carbohydrates have to be procured in our day-to-day -day life through our diet. So, if the diet is lacking any of the essential nutrients, then that can have the deficiency symptoms of deficiency diseases in our body. So, we suffer from such deficiency symptoms all the time. So, our priority is to produce the food that food should have all such vital nutrients. So, when we procure that food, we are going to get these vital nutrients to our body. Around 840 million people in the world, they don't have adequate food. They need to meet nutritional requirement. Around 840 million people in the world, they don't have adequate food daily to meet nutritional requirement. They don't get enough food. They may get only one time food. Okay, they are very poor people, so they are uh, unable to get the food. So they have to earn and they have to spend that money on uh, getting the food material. Okay, otherwise they won't get any food sources or that. Then uh, the number, uh, highly shocking, uh, it is uh, greater than this number, so uh, around 3 billion people in the world, okay, they are suffering from hidden hunger. The deficiency symptoms which are so intake of the food or diet lacking in essential nutrient is known as hidden hunger. So more than 3 billion people suffer from deficiency symptoms. They suffer from deficiency symptoms of vital nutrients of the food uh, such as proteins, vitamins, minerals. So they suffer from different deficiency symptoms. So why they are suffering from such a deficiency symptoms? It is huge number. That is because they are unable to purchase food items because of poor background. Economically, they are very poor. They cannot afford to purchase the food items, food commodities such as pulses, fish, meat, milk and milk products, 
egg, roots, vegetables, etc. They cannot afford to purchase around 3 billion people suffering from the hidden hunger or deficient symptoms. That is because they are unable to purchase these food commodities rich in different vital nutrients. Okay. Pulses, fish, meat, milk, milk products, egg, fruits, vegetables, etc. As their diet lack essential nutrients like protein, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, that is why they suffer from the hidden hunger or different kinds of deficiency symptoms. Diet lacking in Essential nutrients If the diet lack the essential nutrients like sugars or carbohydrate and proteins, vitamins, minerals Essential nutrients like uh, proteins Vitamins Minerals The minerals can be Iodine, iron and zinc So if we consume such kind of diet which lacks the essential nutrients, okay, we are facing the risk, risk of getting disease, what we call deficiency symptom disease. Deficiency of vital nutrients can cause disease, you know, protein deficiency, protein deficiency Nutritional marasmus and crash water, especially in children. Nutritional deficiency of protein, okay, that is nutritional marasmus and crash water, right? Like that, we have different deficiency symptoms, okay. So, facing the risk of getting disease, reduced lifespan, lifespan will be reduced, reduced. Mental abilities, reduce our mental abilities. So, if we consume in our day to day life the food or diet which is lacking essential nutrients like protein, vitamin, minerals, particular iodine, iron, and zinc, then we ourselves face the risk of getting the, the diseases, reduce the lifespan, and reduce the mental abilities. So to overcome such drawbacks, suppose if the diet what we eat, if don't has the vital nutrient, then we cannot procure these nutrients as required by our body in our day-to-day -day life. Hence, the agricultural scientists are emphasizing on developing new kind of crop varieties which are having the vital nutrients in them, so that the common people, the poor people, children who procure this diet, even one time if they get such kind of diet which is nutritional rich, they can overcome that hidden hunger or deficiency symptoms. So in that regard, the plant uh, breeders or agricultural scientists uh, they try to enhance the nutritional quality of the food material. So we have to remember uh, a definition here: biofortification. Plant breeding breeding of crop plants or plant breeding for higher level of vitamins and minerals, higher level of proteins and healthier fat. It is known as biofortification. Breeding of crop plants or plant breeding. Breeding of crop plants or plant breeding to produce higher level of vitamins and minerals, higher level of proteins and healthier fats in 
these crop plants which we can do. Plant breeding for improved nutritional quality or breeding of crop plants for improving the nutritional quality has certain objectives. Okay, so what are the objectives of uh, plant breeding of crop plant with improved nutritional quality that we will discuss uh, tomorrow.